All right, guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Daryloth. If you've never been on the channel before, um, if you have been on the channel, my name is still Daryloth. I wanted to do an Elder Scrolls Online playthrough, and I wanted to do it with the Arcanist class right here. And uh, the thing is, I haven't really played this game and paid attention to the story in quite a while. So I thought that it would be fun to go through and do that on a class that I've never played before. I've never played the... Well, that's not true. I made an Arcanist once, and I got to level 3 with them just to test them out a little bit before I did this, but genuinely, I've never dived into the Arcanist. I don't know of any Arcanist builds in particular. I see them in PvP a lot and whatnot, so I thought that this would be a fun way to dive in and just kind of get started with a new playthrough. Um, I decided to do... Uh, this woman here, I haven't come up with a name for her yet, but my basic backstory with her, and I like to come up with a backstory for every character that I make, my basic backstory is that this woman here is a member of the Skull tribe on Solstein, and she was essentially sent in to uh, Apocrypha at one point to try to help her people out against Hermaeus Mora, since he is consistently the antagonist against the Skull people, uh, or so it would kind of lead me to believe he is in Skyrim in the DLC there. So I thought that that would fit pretty well, uh, which is why I wanted to go with the Nord. She will be a stamina-based Arcanist for those of you who uh, who are Elder Scrolls Online enjoyers. So uh, I'm planning to do a two-handed build with her, uh, but that could change as we level her up. So that's the basic idea here. I'm going to brainstorm a name for her really quickly, and then I think that we'll get going with the uh, with the game. So I go on with this name, Kala the Untold. Uh, untold meaning that basically my idea with her is that at the end of her storyline in this game, she'll more than likely be taken in by Hermaeus Mora and stuck in Apocrypha somehow. So her story will never be told, unfortunately. I mean, you guys will hear it here, but that's the basic backstory. So I'm going to hit accept. Um, I, I do play with controllers, so you're going to notice the UI is a little bit different on here for PC people. But yeah, with that out of the way, we're going to create our character and then we're going to go right in. And I'm going to play through the tutorial here. Uh, I've done it already on previous characters, but I think it'd be cool for people who have never played it before to kind of get the idea of what the basic premise is. Translocation can really upset the stomach. Just take a moment and get your bearings, all right? And where am I? The Isle of Balthiera, home of Clan Barini. I apologize for the cramped accommodations. We pride ourselves on courtesy, but circumstances here have taken a turn for the bizarre. I needed to make sure you weren't a danger to yourself or others. Can you let me out? You might not be so eager to escape once you hear what's going on. You arrive via a portal, along with a Deatric beast called Shai Zed. It seeks control of our golems and unleash them on the island. If I free you, will you help me stop Shai Zed? Yes. Set me free and I'll help. Okay, uh... So, just give me a moment. There. That should unlock the door. Okay. When you're ready, follow me. Very quickly, I have some things that I like to turn on in the settings, so I like to always show my ability bars, um, I always show my resource numbers, uh, number and percent, so I know where I'm at, and you'll understand uh, what that means in just a second. And I like to show my buffs and debuffs that are always on. That shouldn't really be uh, something that we'll have to worry about for a while. And I do also play in third person. Although occasionally I'll go into first when we're talking to someone for this playthrough. There you are. Free as a spring cricket. I hope you intend to keep your word. We'll need each other out there. Of that I'm certain. The name's Norianwe, by the way, of Clan Dorini. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Where are we headed, Norianwe? We're bound for a place called the Two Rice Gallery. But first, I need to know you can defend yourself. Hurtling through the orbis and falling flat on your ear left you a bit scattered. Find a weapon, and we'll work out the cobwebs. Fair? Uh, sure. 
but I have some questions. Of course. I can't promise total transparency, but I'll be as forthcoming as I can. Okay, you mentioned a Keyrites gallery. What is that place? The Keyrites gallery is an ancient substructure of Balthiera Iron, built long before my clan arrived. Why is it called the Keyrites gallery? On account of all the doors. The gallery is full of ancient gates, each with some arcane connection to places in Tamriel and beyond. Once the gates came to life, rifts opened. You fell out of one of them. The Daedra, Shiazel, emerged from another. How did you escape? I cast an incantation of the seed, snatched you up, and fled as fast as my feet would carry me. I heard the Daedra cursing, followed by some kind of explosion, but I didn't look back. My fate the gallery is still standing. I think it's interesting that she picked us up off of our feet and then he, she carried us uh, into a prison cell. <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, okay, what are you doing here? Nothing irresponsible, if that's what you're asking. No. I'm a member of Clan Dureni's intelligence group, the Cinderer. More scholar than spy, I assure you. I was conducting some research in the gallery, then whoop, even that monster arrived. Why were you studying this place? The gallery's always been a place of special interest for the group, but we never quite cracked how it worked. Despite the dangers, this is our greatest breakthrough to date. The Guild Master will be ecstatic, provided we get it under control. Okay, you said something about golems? What's going on here exactly? Would it frustrate you to hear that I have no idea? Nope. We Dureni are cautious by nature, so the Isle of Balthiera has many defenses. Magical stone guardians protect many of our sacred sites. But somehow, this Daedra found a way to turn them against us. Uh, can you describe the Daedra, Shiazel? Oh, do I have to? If I recall my studies correctly, I'd say it's a harvester. A huge serpentine creature that feeds on souls and magicka. If it finds a way to consume the energies of the gallery, we will be in very serious trouble. Okay. I'll go grab my weapon now. And I have always enjoyed the two-handed. Aldmeri's Exile's Great Axe. While it may not be as sharp as it once was, this elven cleaver can still hew flesh, wood, and stone with brutal efficiency. Larger weapons like staves and great axes would take both hands to use. You can pair smaller weapons with a shield, or another weapon of that size. The choice is yours. It's under gameplay here. I'm going to turn tutorials off. I do not need any of them. Okay, cool. Yes, I think that one suits you. If you change your mind, feel free to take any other weapon you want. Now, let's find a spot to practice. Okay, I don't know if I have to practice. I prefer not to. This is as good a place as any. Now, prepare yourself. Okay, I guess we do have to. Okay, well, that was really, really interesting. It was so interesting that I decided to skip all of it. With moves like that, the Daedra could take kind of chance. Yes, I'd say we're ready to set out. Has anyone ever clicked, I'd like to practice combat again? No frickin' way. I'm going to try to keep it PG-13. <laughs> uh, where are we headed now? To reach the Keyrides Gallery. We have to make it out of this ruin and across a wide field full of the golems I mentioned. With any luck, we'll be able to slip past them. But I'm not all that lucky, so I'm sorry in advance. All right, we'll head there next. Uh, what can we expect to encounter in the gallery? Well, it begins with the door, the first of many. The only way to access the gallery is through a mysterious gateway. Once we pass through that initial door, we'll step into a huge vault. This is the part that worries me most. Why does it worry you? I believe Shiazel's the Daedric creature that's causing all this mischief mm -hmm. may have nested itself in there. So be prepared to fight. Will dealing with Shiazel pacify the golems? I can't say anything with certainty, but ridding the world of an otherworldly abomination can't hurt, right? Agreed. Its influence might linger for a time, but the golems should return to normal before too long. Hopefully. All right, let's go. So, if anyone's curious, the reason that I chose Sounds good. Also, we're going to start seeing actual players now that we're in the 
actual open world part, sort of. Uh, so anyone that has this kind of thing over their name, it'll tell you what their uh, profile name is, and then underneath it, it'll tell you what their character name is. So right now we're looking at Sorcellan, it looks like, and they're going through some outfits right now. Uh, I'm going to kind of stylize um, Kala here in a little bit once we get out of the tutorial, but just wanted to give you guys that warning. And if anyone is curious as to why I chose a girl, um, I, you know, I don't think that it's weird at all, but I think that some people might have uh, their issues. Also, I forgot to, um, forgot to equip our uh, first skill point. So let me go here. Yeah, I think this is the one that I wanted. Um, oh, let me read it for you guys. So, rune blades craft a series of apocryphal runes before launching them at a foe, dealing 1,293 magic damage three times and generating crux. This ability deals 3% increased damage for each active crux when cost, and the cost is determined by the highest max resource. So that would be either magicka or stamina, and our stamina is slightly higher since we chose Nord. I believe so oh well actually since i put my point into stamina but there we go that's kind of how the uh how the ability works and you can see down there on the buff bar that we have this crux buff uh for the next 27 seconds Alrighty. so uh yeah the reason that i chose a female i like to keep my cast of characters very diversified so i have uh, I believe I have four male characters and three female characters, so with this one being the third uh, female. But I like to think that all of my characters kind of know each other in some sense, and this just seemed like the more natural progression for keeping things kind of even, I suppose, on both sides. Plus I don't have a Nord yet, so it all just kind of came together really well. And I'll show you guys my other characters at some point as well. Zephyr's bone, the surge of magicka created by the portals you came through. Oh, it must have cracked this sky shard. Without a functioning sky shard, this gate remains locked, and there's no way for us to proceed. Damn it! Is there any way to fix it? Unless you have a set of enchanting tools and a working knowledge of meteoric empowerment theory, no, there's nothing for us. We need to find a replacement. Uh, where can we find a replacement sky shard at? I saw one in a vault just south of here a few days ago, but it was dispensed by one of the island's more powerful fallen. No, that's Normally, fine. I'd say we should search for another option, but given the circumstances, I think we have to. No, we're good. I got this. Uh, all right, let's find that sky shard. Can I ask you something before we set out? Of course. Let's not tarry too long, though. So, what are sky shards exactly? Giant clusters of meteoric glass. They fall from Aetherius, charged with raw and very potent magicka. Mages use sky shards in all kinds of rituals and experiments. We Jeremi use them as a power source. Yeah, me too. What kind of golem did you see near the sky shard? It's a monstrous sentinel called a gargoyle. I've never seen one fight, but by all accounts, they are far more powerful than the golems we faced thus far. All right, let's go. I can take on a golem. So sky shards are basically... Ooh, I forgot there's armor here. Um, sky shards are essentially what uh, what you use to get skill points in this game. Where is the light armor? Here it is. Okay, so a general rule that's good to follow in this game is that it's good to have it's good to level up your light armor your medium armor and your heavy armor all at the same time and you unlock skill lines by doing just that equipping three pieces of the same armor type so there's light medium and heavy in this game which is different from how previous elder scrolls games have done it there we go and i need to unlock the light skill line There we go. Uh, so medium armor determines your 
uh, sorry guys, medium armor determines your stamina overall, basically, and, and your effectiveness with stamina abilities. Heavy armor is for tanking, so it's more for uh, health-based builds, and then light armor is more for magicka, which I quite enjoy. I think that it's a good system that they've come up with here. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to sort of optimize. All right, perfect. And I actually think this uh, this outfit's kind of kind of good so far. Here's a tip, though. I'm going to turn my hat off. Perfect. Now we can see our face, and we're going to get going. And there's the gargoyle. Perfect. Easy. What? Did you just absorb the energy of that shard? Mm-hmm. Incredible. Not quite what I intended, but we can work with it. Yeah, I'm pretty cool like that. We should hurry back to the gate. We don't have the sky shard, but we do have a spark of aetherial energy. That's the important bit. Absolutely. I agree. Mm hmm So I just, I put the power in there already. I jumped the gun a little bit. I'm afraid we've reached the really scary bit. The Daedric creature responsible for all these portals waits just beyond that gate. If you have any other preparations to make, make them now. Now nah, we'll be good. Do you have any advice on how to slay this thing? Again, I'm just a scholar. But I'd encourage you to remember what we practiced before. Keep moving, strike true, and exploit any opening the creature gives you. Cool beans. That's canonically what my character said back. There it is. Send it back to oblivion. Will do. Give you guys kind of a good look of what this thing looks like in first person. I think a lot of the um, a lot of the Daedra in this game look super cool. And harvesters are definitely one of them. Now, one thing I don't think that they explained in the tutorial is that heavy attacks restore—they uh, restore whatever resource you're using to cast your weapon abilities, basically. So, for stabs, if you do a heavy attack with a staff, you'll regain magicka. If you do a heavy attack with a any melee weapon or a bow, then uh, then you gain back stamina. Which is a very interesting thing. Look at the central column. I had no idea it was concealing something like this. Yeah. Let's take a closer look. It's pretty cool. And you know what? I think that's a good question. Okay, guys, I apologize. I got a phone call, but we're basically just going to talk to Nori Anway here and we're going to figure out about where to go next, or she's going to inform us while this guy shoots his bow and arrow over here. Uh, she's going to inform us about the different portals, and I am going to do a poll on my YouTube channel. And I would like to do the base game before I do any DLC content. That way, people who have never played this game before can kind of get an idea about the progression. This guy wants to group with me. I'm unfortunately going to have to decline. But yeah, so we'll talk to Nori Anway here. So, have you chosen where to go? What region of the world strikes your fancy? Not everyone gets to pass instantly from one side of Tamriel to another, you know. So this is quite a gift. Well, any thoughts on where I should go? It is a bit overwhelming, isn't it? 
The whole of Tamriel is stretched out before you. We could start with the political considerations. Three great alliances vie for control of Cirigus. Does the faith of the Tag's covenant or dominion interest you? I'm going to say yes, I would like to travel to Alliance territory here. Excellent. You can visit Sirs Makai and Daggerfall covenant territory, an island called Kanarthi's Roost that the Aldmeri Dominion set its eyes on, or the Ebonheart Pact domain. The Ebonheart Pact is on Bleak Rock Island. Those are our three options. I think I'm going to end the video here, actually, and I'm going to let you guys decide. So these will be the options on the poll. It'll be posted in the community section. And if you've watched this far, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video, hopefully very soon. Goodbye.